So, no, come on, let's, let's get the money. Okay, Chismo, you're here. Why am I struggling with sound when Chismo is here? As a Chismo, I have one request from you. I need a gen. I need a. As a Chismo. Okay. One, two, one, two, let me just test. One, two, Chisma is here. All problems will be solved because my brother is in the hands. Okay, come on. Then we need him to say, as flow it. Who would I draw a Okay. One, two, one, two, yeah, one, two, three, one, two, recording it and see, are you going? When I wait, you can see what I'm saying. Oh, come on, guys. Oh, oh. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? I'm going to say, you know, you know, speak. So, okay, what I, what I mean is that I would want to be my guys, like I'm a talker. Oh. Then Mavanga Mavanga test with the fire on the Gavanga. You know, I'm going to record the place. One, two, 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 one, Hey, there was this one bad one minute to solve it. Yeah? She's more this the savior. Come on now. Uh, one two. Okay, one. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Let me just play something from Okay. It's is it that you got in the this am I bang again? Putting what kind of thing? Yeah, I mean
Catherine. My name is Catherine Chal. Okay, I was just leaving the computer audio. Uh, so my name is Catherine Chalo. Um, I am the Africa uh, Regional Coordinator uh, at Kiktanet for Community Networks uh, under the APC LockNet project. Uh, so Kiktanet, just to give an introduction, Kiktanet uh, stands for the Kenya ICT Action Network, uh, which is a multi-stakeholder think tank for people and institutions. Uh, who are interested in uh, ICT policy and regulation. Uh, the Local Access uh, Network Initiative is a project by APC, which is the Association for the Progressive Communication. Uh, and it is a project uh, which is being done in association with uh, Rhizomatica, uh, with funding from uh, the UK Department's uh, DAP, uh, which is the Digital Access Programmer. Uh, this project is being undertaken in Latin America, Asia, and in Africa. Uh, the aim of the project is to just um, connect the unconnected and to support community networks and any uh, community-based connectivity initiatives. Um, uh, I was waiting for my co-host to come introduce herself. Uh, but uh, maybe just before she, she settles in, uh, yes, I would... Um, I would like to just introduce the session, uh, which was uh, which is on building capacity towards sustainability of community networks. Uh, I feel like at the center of any of any movement, uh, at the center of any movement is capacity building. Uh, and having attended most of the sessions which were prior to this session, is I realize capacity building is very important, especially when it comes to uh, even this space of community networks. Uh, and I'd like to applaud the efforts of APC and Kiktanet and all the other partners in trying to build capacity around community networks and getting uh, uh, stakeholders into the room and getting them to understand uh, what are community networks, what is the concept behind community networks, what are their needs, um, what are their goals. Uh, and uh, in getting them to understand, then it becomes possible for them to develop uh, policies and products uh, uh, that will help the community networks to accomplish whatever it is that they want to accomplish, which is connecting uh, the unconnected in the underserved areas. Um, I think just still on capacity building, I think things that have come up uh, before, which since we are on capacity building uh, in the previous sessions, uh, which uh, definitely it's something that needs to be worked on, is uh, the issue of uh, uh, community networks being non-profit. I think it's something that maybe uh, should, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, capacity building should be built around that area uh, because whilst the community networks are very afraid of that, of making any money because of that term, afraid that uh, probably they'll be overstepping uh, the conditions of them being non-profit. And also be, uh, on the other side, the regulators and the governments are also uh, not willing to invest so much uh, because of them being non-profit, uh, because they feel then where is the sustainability uh, of the initiative uh, if you're being non-profit. Uh, so uh, maybe just to clarify on that, I think uh, I'd like to clarify that non-profit does not mean you cannot make profit. It just means the profit trickles down uh, back to the community, not to other people's pockets, but back uh, to the projects in the community. So I'd like to take this chance to uh, to let uh, Harira uh, to introduce herself, then we can continue. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. My name is Harira Abrahman Wakili, working with Center for Information Technology and Development, CITAD, based in Nigeria. Um, I'm a gen gender and internet right advocate, um, and also working toward uh, community networks in Nigeria, toward developing community networks in Nigeria. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Harira. Um, so even though there's no um, official uh, definition for community networks, I think for me, I would, I would define community networks as uh, 
uh, technological and organizational processes for, with, uh, and by the community, where the community leverages the technology that's accessible to them to be able to meet their own needs. Um, so under the LockNet project uh, was born a new project, uh, which is called the National School of Community Networks, uh, which is being undertaken in five different countries, which is Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, Indonesia, and Brazil. Uh, um, national schools are just a capacity building and strengthening powerhouse, uh, uh, which are used to create, develop, and just collaborate community networks. Uh, the initiative started in uh, December 2021. Uh, and so far, uh, uh, all the schools, all the schools have gone through their first phase. Uh, Nigeria, Nigeria has gone through the first phase. Uh, Kenya has gone through the first phase. Uh, South Africa is, is actually uh, joining the first and the second phase uh, together. Uh, under this initiative, uh, so far 65 participants have gone through it uh, and uh, very glad that over half of them are actually uh, women. Uh, so under this initiative, we'd like to say it's more of a participatory approach. It takes a participatory approach where uh, the community networks themselves are involved in the creation of the school. So it's not just an outside process that APC decides, this is what you're going to do, this is what you're going to do. We just, they're just given a framework. And so the community networks take it up. Uh, they are the ones responsible for bringing on board uh, uh, an advisory board. They're the ones who go out and source for the advisory board. Uh, which could either be uh, stakeholders from the government, it could be from civil society, from academia, which is uh, experts, they bring them on board. They're the ones responsible for going out and looking for uh, what we call the micros, uh, which are the other community networks, which uh, is not the community networks that is convening uh, the school. So what I'd like to mention is that first there's the community network that is responsible co for convening the school. So they bring in the advisory board, they bring in the community network that are supposed to be attending the school, uh, which in total is seven for every school. Uh. So there's the community network that is convening the school, then they go out and look for seven community networks, bring them on board, uh, and the, each of those community networks looks for uh, three participants. Uh three participants who are going to be represented in the school. Um, being a participatory uh, approach and them taking ownership of the process, they're the ones that sit down and decide what content they want for the school. And the content could revolve around a network infrastructure, sustainability, it could revolve around policy, it could revolve around uh, business skills, uh, personal development skills. Uh, so they're the ones that decide what they want uh, featured in the school. Uh, um, and then after that, um, they're the ones that are responsible. So the school uh, takes on different forms. Uh, so we could have um, online classes, like for example, I would like give the example of like um, South Africa. Uh, South Africa has combined phase one and phase two of the school. Uh, so what they have done is that they are doing an online uh, whisper class course for the participants, which is the wireless ISP course. And the students have gone through the course for around uh, four to six weeks, and it's an accredited course by Val University. So at the end of this, uh, 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 at the end of these online classes, they actually do get certificates. Aside from the online participation, also there's the face-to-face -face workshop that they're doing. And after that, there's mentoring that is going on right now after the face-to-face, -face, which is ongoing until November, where the experts who are involved in the school uh, take on the participants uh, on a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session until November. And for this second phase, what APC is doing is that they're getting the participants to actually draw up a plan of now you have gone through the school, what are you going to do back in the community? So you draw up a plan, bring it to APC, you're given funds to go back and begin, uh, and begin something. Uh, for the case of, um, maybe I'd like to talk maybe what, what is happening maybe beyond, beyond the school for the second phase. For the second phase, like Tunapandanet in Kenya, 
is taking on a TOT approach, the trainer of trainers, where uh, the participants who are in the school, uh, they went through, uh, like for Tuna Panda, they did, they focused on network infrastructure and services, they focused on sustainability and policy and regulation. So the participants who were involved in the school, uh, what they do, they come, they bring them together. If let's say uh, we have 21 participants, those were three uh, different sessions. Huh? So seven of them attended network infrastructure. So they get the seven of them, go visit uh, another uh, uh, network, and then they teach, huh? they train, or rather for what uh, Tunapanda is doing, like for now there's a community network that is deploying hotspots. So these participants come, and then they go to that other uh, community network and they help to set up the hotspots. So which is, um, it's part of training also uh, for them. So uh, another notable uh, thing that has come out of the training is like common room in Indonesia, uh, where the participants, uh, they focused on an area like a participants uh, focuses, let's say on local content creation, and they have gone back to their communities and set up training for the community. So from 21 participants, each of them going back to the community, training another 21 participants and another 21 participants, and it trickles down. It trickles down like that. Huh? Um, uh, probably what I would like to mention is what happens, huh? what we would, we would like to see, or rather what I would like to see uh, beyond this. Huh? Um, I am thinking into making the whole uh, school sustainable, uh, into making the whole school sustainable. I am thinking uh, like for here in Kenya is involving in Africa rather, it is involving the local government uh, in a skills development program where you go to the local government and say, this is rather an ICT development skills development program and say, it, and if it, there isn't in your country, or rather in your community, you go back and say, we want an ICT skills development program, and we are going to come out and we are going to develop a curriculum for it. Huh? So that, that is one way of also of um, ensuring that the community networks actually remain sustainable and there are people who are going to be running these community networks. Huh? Um, so maybe for now, I'd like to give it to, to Harira to give us the uh, what has been happening in Nigeria with the community, the first phase, what happened, and what they're actually planning for the second phase. Sir. Thank you very much, Kate. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine. Um, um, uh, for Nigeria School of Community Networks, um, we did the first phase. So what happened um, during the first phase is that um, we were able to reach out to people in, in, in the communities, um, the communities where uh, the micro, several micro organizations are situated. So the approach we use uh, at the base phase things is a learning phase for us. There are so many things that we later learned from other peers. So is um, is that uh, we we work together with the micro organizations to get in participant, um, three participants from each micro organization um to to select three and that three should be like we have one from technology one from the capacity building and advocacy and the other one from um business background so we we had um the face phase of the school which was a success to us um we run it for for five days and later we have two months mentorship program where we keep on mentoring um doing continue the school online um due to resources we cannot keep them for the whole months during the school so we we did uh a face to face um and then we did an online phase with them so oh, the the success we recorded during the school is that um, before the School of Community Networks, um, activities keep on going, but there's these challenges of um, clear understanding of the concept, concept of community networks and what the expectation is um, from um, 
from the side of the community. So it was like um, a, a thing like there is this um, gap of understanding, which we believe the school helps us to, to bridge that gap because after the school, a lot of testimonies happened, uh, a lot of advocacy, advocacies was done by the, um, by the participant of the schools. And they, they were doing a kind of um, community meeting after the school to get other, uh, other community members um, informed on what is happening and the knowledge they gain during the school and to see how they can work together as community to, uh, to, to solve the issue and continue with their advocacies. So um, with that, we were able to, uh, I think what two communities get, um, get a land donation from from their representatives before the, the school and the, the after the school we get one community in abuja that was able at the result of advocacy and a result of um conversation they had with the community it's like they ha they are having this kind of um weekly kind of events that they do within their community it is a muslim oriented community so they do it after the muslim prayer the night prayer whereby uh, um uh, people are all like even those that are uh, in the market are all at home so they sit together as communities to discuss the issue and by that they don't necessarily they don't really do a kind of gathering call people to come like we have an event no they use the opportunity of having people together at a time then they they, they sell the idea to them which is which is really kind of um is the, which is which really is the work because of recent i think last two weeks um the team was in abuja um had the one one on one meeting with the traditional uh, religious leaders of those communities uh, to see how uh, issues of infrastructures can come in, how, how community can give of their give on give their support to to make to see that we uh, the work keeps on going. So um, after the school, like I said, um, one community was able to to do advocacy to uh, to one of their chairman, local government chairman, who happens to give them um, a land whereby it will be used to install the tower for 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 the net for for the community network so these are some of the things that we see after the school so for us this the school it really is our work it really gives us the opportunity to get the attention of those people to to understand that yes this is what really we really need from them and we have this kind of approach of giving them the sense of ownership we we, we show them that this is your work and it, the, like this is your own project it's not ours because at the end of the day apc will not, may not be here CTAT may not be here but you are here to sustain your um uh, the, the community networks and um at first we used um uh, the existing community that we're already working on there is this project that was conducted before where we have um ICT centers for the seven communities in Abuja. Um, ICT centers were installed. So, they, they, like, they, they're, they're, for for having an ICT center where they they can use as a library for the for the community, they they have it. So they they are using that uh, as uh, like since they have this issue of connectivity and for schools like for uh, secondary school students since jam um the joint west uh, the jam exams now is online and the issue that nigeria is facing most most especially in the rural part is that there are less um there are this massive failure which have to do with lack of literacy um computer literacy education so those love were using for that and and uh, and um looking while doing while having conversation with those communities um a kind of thinking of sustaining the centers come into them because um we were thinking of oh, oh no nah, when, when we go and when there's no donor that we sustain the centers that will keep on giving us money to to sustain to, to to continue this work how will this community keep on going so is it so from the from what we see is that the community is already doing something on that the centers that we built for them, they made the building and we give them the, 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 the equipment. They are using the centers to generate little amount of money that they used to buy fuel 
they use to sustain when there is um issue or like they have issue with with anything in the center they use the money they generate to 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 buy if a child is going out of town is to abuja town to to, to pay transport and pay money for a cyber cafe to 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 access um assignment or to access any digital literacy so uh, at a rate of like maybe say let's say 1000 naira the center is is collecting like 300 200 naira to give him access and they use that money to, to do this to sustain these center centers so that things will continue so um i think um in terms of um uh, School of Community Network, that's really built their capacity. It gives them clear understanding, clear knowledge of what we want, where we are going, and the steps we are taking in going in, going in there. And um, for the second school, um, looking at the way we have less number of female participants during the first school, um, raise, uh, like give us, like we are, we are concerned about how do we get these women came out? Because the issue is not only from the men uh, not giving the woman chance, is the woman not having this, um, the woman not, not being interested in coming out to participate in things like this. So what we do is that to, to, to see that we have a balance of equation. This time around, we then give the opportunity, the, the, the communities uh, leaders, the opportunity to send the representative. We learn from Zanzeleni community um as the the this they they like they send a public um call for application but it has to do within the communities whereby this project is going on um accent like we, we send a public um call for application and we have like more people applying more new faces applying and more women applying to that because um it, i think during the first school we have like um i think 10% of women, which as a result of that, we, we, we do a consultative women, a consultative meeting on gender and community networks, whereby in, we invite um, women journalists, bloggers, women that are doing well in their communities to come in and have a discussion on this so that we can create more awareness. The awareness will not be like within um, uh, within limited uh, community, but let it be broader awareness. The bloggers can help us. Uh, the, the, the women in media can help us where we have um, uh, uh, women that really talked like hold a conversation um after the the meeting to see that they get more women involved we talked on the importance of them of we having them uh in the team so so as we can work toward like um having more women in in the community network space because to be honest with you in nigeria we have less in the communities we are working with we have less participation of women women are not occupying this space uh, this space is being occupied by most the men and um it is is a kind of a, a very disturbing thing for us which we are trying as much as we can to see that we we take care of that issue during the second school uh, i think that's that's what i can say for now yeah thank you very much Harira. i think uh, what you're talking about on our sustainability has been definitely a very sticky issue um, even even though uh, apc and other partners and people are getting in and trying to uh, uh, to bring all this capacity building within community networks, because, you know, community networks are built around uh, uh, probably um, uh, individuals who don't have the expertise, but how do we make this program sustainable? And that's why I come back, because I keep saying uh, at the center of any policy creation is political goodwill. Uh, they cannot, if there's no political goodwill, then policies cannot uh, policies cannot be made. But then how do we get our governments involved in this process of community networks huh? so that it's not just seen as, as an external initiative huh? that is just dependent on grants? How do we get our governments involved huh? uh, even in, um, in this process of capacity building? And that's why I go back to uh, at the end of it all, um, uh, it would be good if the community networks can also uh, go back to their local governments and say, you know what, uh, here we have here we are, we have uh, the capacity. Uh, here is what we have learned. We would like to start a skills development program related to ICT. So getting the local governments involved um, in this skills development capacity. So the community networks to bring in the curriculum and getting the youth uh, involved is one of the sustainable um, 
uh, programs. Uh. Uh, so before we finish, I think I'd like to mention uh, something else that APC is doing for uh, as part of capacity building. Uh, which we call uh, COPs, which is communities of practice. Uh, communities of practice is just communities of experts uh, or people who want to uh, uh, want to build an expertise around a certain area. Uh, so far, for now, we have uh, we have uh, a COP on uh, sustainability. Uh, we have another one on bamboo mast, which is people who come together and they're trying to see because infrastructure has been a very sticky issue even for uh, just startups, uh, even startups just getting uh, a tower where you can put up your equipment uh, is, has become very, very expensive. So one of the alternatives is to have, uh, is to have bamboo mass. And maybe on the, same, on the same issue, I would like to mention, maybe for anyone who's listening and would like to, um, when I was at uh, Bosco, Uganda, which is a community network in Uganda, what they're doing uh, in terms of infrastructure sharing is they are going to radio stations who already have the towers, uh, and saying, you know what, are we, uh, we want to put up our equipment on this tower. And what we're going to do, we are going to give you internet for free. And it has worked uh, so, so very well for them. They have about 15, 15 masks, and only eight of them belong to them, uh, actually seven. The rest of them actually belong to radio stations. Uh, so that is one of the ways also um, community networks can, can try to mitigate the issue of infrastructure sharing. Uh. Uh, so under the COP still that as APC is running, we have the one on sustainability. We have another one on bamboo masts, where they are involving also experts on how do we grow bamboo masts, how do we set it up. Um, uh, another one they have is on um, a local local content creation, uh, local content creation because we know uh, for you to get the the community network to be able to be, even be interested. Uh, in using the network so that the network does not just become, uh, it's just for Facebook and for YouTube. It's about uh, creating applications, creating libraries that are actually relevant for the community. Uh, so that's one of the things that uh, uh, APC is actually, APC LockNet uh, under the LockNet project is doing uh, uh, to build capacity to be able to sustain uh, community networks. Uh, um, so I think we have three minutes left. I'd like to open it up if, um, there's any questions, any contributions? Uh, uh, yes. Um. Thank you so much. Uh, it's disappointing that this session is only 30 minutes, by the way. And if yeah. there's no other session coming in this room, I just say we take over <laughs> and continue if you're available, of course. But anyway, I just wanted to say that, you know, I'm really glad to see this conversation around community networks really resonating so much um, because we do know that communities that have community networks in particular have a higher rate of meaningful connectivity, including digital literacy rates. It, it has a ripple effect beyond just connecting people. My question uh, becomes, what have you observed as the enabling policy and regulatory environment uh, that's made these successful. I know even in South Africa, getting licensed spectrum for community networks continues to be a challenge. And I think it's the combination between uh, being a social enterprise as opposed to a commercial enterprise. And how do we inf begin to, I mean, I think I feel like we need to be educated on how to make the case for community networks to be granted either unlicensed spectrum or some kind of an arrangement as a social enterprise um, that is providing value to the community uh, as opposed to what we are what we are seeing which is sometimes mobile operators opposing uh, the establishment of community networks when in fact they exist in a place where the same operators told us it was never commercially viable for them to service those populations. So, and then another quick one is they've, community networks have consistently focused on rural and far-flung areas, and that's actually excellent. However, I think that as we grow, we need to begin to think about those peri-urban areas that have not been properly serviced. Uh, it may not be the focus right now, but I look at a place like New York City, for example, 
that is a metropolitan city and has a community network? What are the big stumbling blocks from us being able to do that even in the cities? Because I think we need to disrupt the economic model of uh, connectivity so that we can begin to think about giving access to the internet in the same way we think about subsidizing potable water for poor communities, subsidizing electricity for poor families. We need to think about connectivity in a similar way and community networks could actually provide us with that model. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe I would address uh, uh, your second uh, uh, your second comment on having these setups in, in urban areas, uh, in places where maybe we have informal settlements where people cannot really afford uh, aff afford uh, this connectivity from uh, the commercial telcos. Uh, actually, those, those setups do exist. Uh, yes, uh, like we have Tuna Pandanet in Kenya, which is actually in the middle of Nairobi, but it's existing in the informal settlement of Kibera. And what they're doing is that they're connecting schools, they're offering affordable access uh, uh, to, to the community. Here in South Africa, I think also we have um, VNET. We have VNET. Yes, we have VNET, which, yes, which is actually covering uh, most, uh, most of the rural, uh, the, I don't, don't want to call it, uh, most of the informal settlements. Uh, they have, I think, about over 100 hotspots. Uh, Yes, sir. So yes, sir. those are some of the community networks that are addressing that issue um, in, uh, in the urban areas. Uh, on what we can do uh, maybe to, to encourage uh, community networks to spring up in, uh, in terms of policy, I keep going back to policy creation uh, depends on political goodwill. Uh, and some of the things is, first of all, um, uh, just creating a policy um, for community networks uh, to be able to access backhaul capacity cheaply so that at least they can be given, uh, they can be very subsidized prices for bandwidth. And I think uh, there, there are also those uh, community networks that are also uh, using uh, uh, bandwidth from uh, commercial telcos. And there has been talk about them, like, uh, let's say, like um, it's Vodacom going to Vodacom and saying, okay, uh, we, we are a, a social enterprise. Uh, instead of uh, can you can you subsidize the prices uh, for us uh? and another sticky issue also is on infrastructure sharing uh? and what can be done so that the commercial takers are also able to get on board uh? well, with the with the with community networks and being able to offer them uh, a space uh, on their towers uh? yes sir. um there was another question um Um, thank you so much. Amazing conversation. Uh, my name is Rispa Kinyi. I work with uh, Tunapanda Net uh, Community Network in Nairobi. And um, we also do a similar uh, thing that Harira and Kathleen have talked about in terms of um, capacity building other community networks that want to start or are already existing in the country. And it's been um, a great um, space for exchange because then we bring on board people who have experience in this space, people who have run community networks before and also enthusiasts. Thank you. We do have experts who come in to uh, give depth to some of this conversation, but the capacity building is um, is built or is how it's thought through is through um, exchange between the peers. We call them peers. So communities learning from uh, each other. That is the space that we create. If it's mentorship, what is another community network doing that they can learn from uh, the other community network that is already doing the same thing? If it's in rural areas, what can be borrowed? What can be exchanged? What are some of the successes and barriers? Because this knowledge already exists in these communities. And the only thing they need is to share among themselves and if there is something that needs like um that needs depth then we bring in experts in this space 
So that is one thing that I wanted to allude to. And also to your question, maybe just to also share with regards to um, educating on how to make a case for CNs to be granted license. Uh, Nairobi is, uh, Kenya uh, is a good example because we have a license category uh, for community networks. And how this came about is through lobbying as a unit and not um, people doing the same work, working in different, uh, in silos. So we, um, to the community networks are engaged in the process. Kiktanet that deals with policy was engaged in the process. So when, uh, when uh, Kenya approached the regulatory, um, the regulators, then it was so easy to make the case because there was impact that was being felt by different people who are pushing the CN uh, agenda. So maybe also other um, other countries can yes can um, can synergize on um, on the ready efforts that are existing in that country so that when we are making um, a case to the regulators, then it's it's something that is not just in one community, but different communities in, in the country. Thank you. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Evelyn Namara. I'm with the Alliance for Affordable Internet. Uh, my question is, it's actually not a question, but a thought. When you spoke about Bosco Uganda, Tunapanda Net, when I think about con community networks, those are literally the examples I always hear every single time. And I'm sure we have many other examples that exist. How do we consolidate all of this work that is already done and put it in a way, because yesterday we were having sessions with the parliamentarians and most of them say they need capacity building to know that these things actually exist. Because we speak about these stories, but they're not, amplified in a way that they should actually be, whether it's in local media or in a way that actually should be taken to these policymakers to say, let's make a case for community networks. So I feel there's a gap between the people doing the work and the people who actually need to go out and say, hey, these are the actual tangible examples that we have uh, in the peri areas or in the rural areas that, you know, this is a kind of impact that we see and these community networks uh, are doing. So I think once we bring those examples and even ask for a session in parliament and tell them this is what we need and therefore we can then start advocating for unlicensed spectrum, I feel like these stories are in our communities, we people who know about them, but when you go to mainstream, if you looked at, if you had like 20 parliamentarians or the policymakers for that case and ask them about community networks, they have absolutely no clue what's happening. So there's a disconnect there that needs to be connected. And I think it, it starts with us, but also how do we amplify that in a more sustainable way? Hi, I'm Rosalind Zanja. I'm with the University of Malawi. Um, actually, I just heard about community networks here. I had no idea of what it is and caught my attention. Um, you, Catherine, you spoke to you spoke about how you you are in coordination with the schools, and when you asked of how you know we can um, get uh, the government involved, I just want I I was thinking I. To question and an idea at the same time. If you're in schools, I think the first place to start would be with the Ministry of Education, if Kenya has the Ministry of Education, because I, I feel that way. Again, we come into her question on how do we um how do we amplify it? Is that when you, you get in touch with the Ministry of Education, there's a chance. I do not know how the Ministry of Education works in Kenya, but there's a, a chance of getting other schools, other stakeholders um, included in, in, in amplifying and introducing community networks in maybe other schools, uh, other communities, and, and et cetera. So maybe that's that's a food for thought to see, you know, how do we get there? I think I'm coming from um, where the Ministry of, Minister of Education was just talking about how Malawi has the same idea of how to get the education sector involved. I think once we get the education sector involved, there's, there's a chance because I'm coming from the University of Malawi and um, I'm thinking of how I'm not just from Lilongwe. This, there are people from Salima, uh, Garonga and across 
across the country that are coming from one university. So there's a chance that one person will carry it to, to their respective homes. Um, just uh, again, you talked about um, how you um, the using towers from radio, radio with radio stations and to give them free internet. Again, coming back on the issue of amplifying, I was jotting this down. I didn't think somebody would ask it. Um, that is another chance of how these radio stations, again, when you talk of um, partnerships, I work with a lot of partnerships and it's a deal deal situation where again, maybe let's use these radio stations I um, hope any Malawian in here is borrowing again, um, where we use these radio stations to help us get the news across. Um, Malawi has a lot of uh, community radios. Um, I know a few of my students have been writing and researching on community radios in Malawi. Um, and some of these community radios do not just reach um, one area, one community, they end up reaching maybe two or more, three neighboring communities. Again, that's a way of, you know, trying to see, I'm, I'm not really conversant with ICT and the internet, I do not know how it works, I'm learning, but again, why, how can we use these, these radio stations, community radio stations to also get into our neighboring communities that are there? I think those, those are what I had jotted, jotted down. Thank you. I think Karida wanted to respond to, to the first one. Yeah, um, a, a, a response to the first, um, the other lady. <laughs> So uh, um, in Nigeria, we took a step. Um, looking at the issue that we don't have a policy on ground or supporting the implementation of uh, community networks, we, we, we are working together. We took a step to work together with regulators um, to, to have a policy framework on ground whereby uh, these community networks can work effectively and there will be policy to back their, their implementations. So um, we also use media. CITAD is, is like a, a, media, a media organization because our engagement with media in Nigeria is very strong. Uh, we worked with media to ensure that we have, um, we, we, we talked about, people get to know what this community networks is all about. Um, at first, um, we, we write a letter to NCC Nigerian Communication Commission um, seeking for a kind of conversation together, seeing on how we can come up with all of these things. So we didn't get the chance to because our letter was there for, for months without getting any response from them. So the, 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 another approach we take is that we have a media briefing. We talked about this. This is what we want from NCC. This is what community network is all about. This is what the way in which we can get so, 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 so things and that. So in, we did it on Thursday. On Monday, we received a letter at our office from NCC requesting to have a meeting with us. From there, the conversation started. From there, we continue to do advocacy, online advocacy, media advocacy one-on-one -on -one advocacy, we get the chance to even with the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, we get, we get to see other regulators in Nigeria, whereby we have this discussion. And commitment is still on ground, uh, like work is still on the green on how to say, how we can, like, I wanted to say that in terms of getting people to, to uh, getting the, the people involved to know that this is what we want, we are really doing it that in Nigeria. And, and I, I, I think other countries that are working on this are, are really doing that. Only that, you know, when you're having issue, like you're having a kind of collaboration with the government, it's not always an easy tax. You have to be keep on going, keep on going, keep on going until when. And we will not get tired. We are still going. And from the result we are seeing, from the response we are seeing from them, it shows that, yes, we have a very smooth relationship with, with them. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um, on your issue of uh, trying to get the, the Ministry of Education involved, um, Yes, a lot is being a lot is being done within the the national schools, uh, because as I said, uh, usually before the school begins, uh, the community network that is convening the school uh, gathers up an advisory committee. Part of the advisory committee usually are people from academia. Usually, it's people from the government, uh, from civil society, but and mostly are the people who actually run. Uh, uh, the school in terms of the sessions, most of them are actually uh, like you find uh, lecturers, uh, yes, from the university. So yes, that that is that is one way. 
um, on, on getting uh, the Ministry of uh, Education yeah, yeah, involved further. Uh, yes, that is definitely something we are going to look at. But again, going back to what I said, um, getting the government to be invested um, in terms of getting the local, especially the local, probably st let's start from uh, the grassroots, uh, getting the local government involved and saying, um, here we are, uh, we have opportunities for, for the youth, we have opportunity to connect our community, um, let's start a skills development program. Yes, we, we, we come in with what, what APC is doing. We come in with, uh, with some of these uh, courses from ISOCA and let us build something uh, from there. Um, I don't know if there's, uh, I think she has another question. Uh, I think we're running out of, uh, yes, yes, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Question, but uh, I think an offer, uh, I'm the head of Africa for the Alliance for Affordable Internet, and we actually have a coalition in Nigeria. Just had a meeting on July 7th, which was also attended by Dr. Pantami, the minister of, uh, because we worked through an MOU with the ministry. And one of the things, issues that came up at this last meeting, interestingly, was community networks and understanding how we can use the coalition to support uh, the work that co uh, community networks are doing. So I just want to make that offer to say, you have a coalition. I mean, we understand uh, the close uh, connection between affordability and meaningful connectivity, as well as the value, what the value of community networks bring towards that uh, advancing that cause. So if there's any uh, support we can offer, any action, pub participating in public consultations, including that in our agenda as well, since it's already come up, uh, we, you know, definitely HS service, and I would love to invite you to our next coalition meeting to just uh, speak with the members so that even when we are not having a coalition meeting, they understand where and how to support uh, this effort because it's very much aligned to advancing affordability and meaningful connectivity. And that goes to whoever else is in Ghana, Mozambique, the Gambia, which are some of the other countries where we have coalitions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I think I'd like to touch on what she was talking about um, on visibility. Yeah, on visibility. Um, out of the, the, the national schools we have seen, uh, one is the formation of consortiums that's happening. Uh, Kenya already has one underway. Yeah, that they're creating. South Africa also has one underway that they are creating. I, I feel that those are going to be some of the avenues that we can use to create visibility. Um, and also, if you go to, uh, to, to most of this, like apc.org, to Kicktonet's website, there's so much that is being talked about regarding community networks. Sir. Yes, but definitely I agree. Uh, more needs to be done to, 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 uh, to, paint out the visibility of what it is that is happening within the space uh, and to get the government especially invested. Uh, because I feel like if the governments are invested, then that is how we can start building sustainability past, uh, depending on grants uh, uh, past, uh, because the, the, the child has already been born. Uh, the child is uh, being introduced to food and we want the child to start walking and running uh, and that can only be possible if our governments are actually invested in the whole process. So I think we have, um, yes, 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 sure. So, so with regard to like getting people get to know about that, we have to translate a full whole document into local language for easy understanding by the people in those communities. So we have two documents, one in English, and we give um, like uh, we 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 look for somebody in our organization because our, we have some people that do translations. They translate the whole document, which we share with the community members to read and understand. Because sometimes we we, we discover that sometimes the language is not too clear for them. Most especially that has to do with um technology and stuff. So we have to translate the, the, the document into how into local language so that they can understand the Hakka broad like clear understanding on the concept. Yes, thank you very much everyone for participating. Yes, and uh, in this session, thank you very much. We have uh, overrun our time. Thank you for a fruitful conversation. Thank you.